Abraham Lincoln has this great quote. He said, when I do good, I feel good. When I do bad, I feel bad. That's my religion. And I think, I think life should be simple. You know, you just have to shine as the, the beacon, do more, say less, just show and prove. But, but you, you definitely have to be intentional in your action. You know, you have to uh, be inspired and you have to be tried and true. I'm Iman Shumpert. I'm Ari Shumpert. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men, brought to you by Uninterrupted. Who better to have as a guest than my man, CeeLo Green. What's going on, my dog? What's up, bro? Thanks for having me. What's going on? What's going on, man? Today's show, man, uh, it's going to focus on artistry and self-expression. Uh, one question to get it started. Can you define what style means to you? I, uh, I, I read a, a great quote, style is being yourself on purpose. Mm. Mm. But style is also like fit, right? Um, well, you know, well, it's got to it's gotta look good on you. You know what I mean? It's got to fit you. Yeah. Um, Where do you think that comes from? Like that comfortability, you know, doing what or wearing whatever you want to wear. Like, where does that come from? Well... I think I think the confidence actually does come from being comfortable. How you feel in it, it's, it's almost like a material. It's like a fabric. It's like a cut, uh, a couture. They make a second skin, a spirit mm. animal. Okay, okay, okay. Growing up, because you said, you know, you liked watching kung fu movies. You know, you got you really have an eclectic style and like an an older taste. Where does that, does that come from a person or does that just come from you exposing yourself to all types of different, you know, things and music and, you know, different art? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely about what I was exposed to um, and what spoke to me. Is there like a specific pinpoint to that reference or influence? Well, I could definitely say I grew up around that older, it's, it's even older than old, it's ancient. I mean, like, <laughs> That, that spirit that resides in the church community. You know, yeah. both my mother, both my mother and father were both uh, ministers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I referenced the James Brown movie, Get On Up Earlier. So like, you know, if you notice um, a lot of those, um, those, those biographies, they reference back to the church, whether it was Ray Charles, whether it was James Brown, mm -hmm. um, you know, Little Richard. Yeah, I also had that type of rearing an experience in the church. So I got a chance to see um, the mother's board, you know, with the, you know, they were coming through with the big yeah. hats and they would fly <laughs> on the deacons, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, also, okay. Also that good old gospel music, that Baptist, Southern, Southern yeah. Baptist gospel music is just, it's just different. You'll never forget it. You know, as a kid, just growing up, you know, being young and being open and being impressionable, that definitely got into me like a spirit. And, but, um, but it was always like, ever since you started dressing yourself, that's what you wanted to buy, that's what you wanted to wear. It was always different from everybody else. Uh, my father passed when I was when I was very young. My father passed, passed when I was two. And to be totally honest, bro, I really don't know where it came from, but um, I wore suits. I almost wore suits every day as a kid. And, um, you know, there's this hair care products uh, family empire called the Bronner Brothers. Okay. Um, so basically, it, it, I, I think even Eddie Murphy's uh, coming to America, I think that family, um, <laughs> the Soul Go, Go yeah, family, Soul Go yeah. family, I think that was a play off of the real life Bronners of Atlanta because they made all of this, you know, black hair care product stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and they were wealthy in the city and they would do these, um, these hair conventions really early. So. <laughs> I have never heard yeah, that Yeah, I've before. never heard that either. Oh, man, y'all might be all of something, man. Yeah. The Bronner Brothers. The Bronner yeah. Brothers. Um, oh, that's black right. excellence, definitely, man. So, you know, they would run out the big convention centers and you would walk through. And again, here we go talking about styles. We're talking about hairstyles. When I was young, I had what was called the cold wave. It was basically just straight hair. I had long hair down the back of my neck. Um, mm. I wore suits. And you talking about in kindergarten, 
and I used to carry one of those little pocket Bibles, the little red ones. <laughs> yeah. carry, my, carry my little Bible. And my father left me an ivory pipe, you know, so I never smoked none out of it, but it just smelled like smoke. And yeah. I knew that I, I knew that it was a um an heirloom, you know what I mean, like from my father. So I prided myself with I used to keep it inside my little uh, inside uh Pocket, pocket in my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure grown folks thought he was smoking. We're I'm fine. sure they thought he was smoking. Oh, shit, whether they understood or not, I feel it. It's like, that's a comfort, man. I can still smell that and feel like you right here. So, yeah, so we, we was exposed to the different styles and um finger waves and stuff like that. Y'all familiar with that? Yeah, my wife be oh, doing yeah. finger waves yeah. and shit, man. Yeah. She was we had to aunties to... and cousins who used to do that. She tried to get me to do it when she did it. I told her, <laughs> man, you could pull that move. I can't pull that move. <laughs> I can't pull that move. Believe it or not, bro, I had some finger waves, but a lot of the hustlers used to wear finger waves, you know, in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing it too. He's like, I don't even know. What he was I doing. don't even know why I was doing it, but I was with them niggas doing that shit. <laughs> That's fire. We uh, we read that you was in a household with fifteen family members. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, all my, you know, um, everybody had one of them big mama houses. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, my, my my grandmother was one of those one of those gentle. Uh, souls of where, you know, hey man, if he was, you know, in between places or displaced in any kind of way, man, come find you a corner on the floor over here, man. <laughs> oh, so we gonna make these pallets? Y'all go foot to bed in the mattress joint and we good. You already know. <laughs> how do you exactly stand, stand right there at that point as an artist? How do you think that, you know, kind of helped you, you know, being in a house with that many people at a time and all types of craziness going on at, at any moment. It's like, how do you ground yourself and still, you know, do what you need to do to be you? It's a humbling, it's a humbling environment. And, you know, one thing about having siblings, it'll teach you how to share your food. It'll give you character. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a card that you may not use until later on in life. Yep. You may not realize the core essentials that it gives you. You know, Real like talk. in the way that in the way that you come up. You know what I mean? But um, you know, I I do realize that most product is a product of, of its environment. You know, but you can be a product of the, the environment that you're living in, and you also can be a product of the, the imagination with inside of you. So, you know, I grew up in the area of, you know, being the latchkey kid, me and one sibling, I had an older sister. You know, sometimes having an older sister is like being an only child. <laughs> we didn't relate to much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or <laughs> Unless we was arguing or something like that. Real talk. We was pissed. It wasn't, it was very seldom there was any kind of PDA, public display of affection. But like, um, I would just remember, and we were just together not too long ago, man, it just kind of brought tears to my eyes. It was like, damn, man, this big sis, man, I'll never get another one. And she paid attention to things that I, I was into at the time. So, I, I mean, me as a kid, I had a really unique taste in music. Like I like Duran Duran. Right. I like cult I love culture club. You name it, you know, madness. Our house in the middle of our street. Uh, right. You know, just growing up looking at Channel 17, video night tracks. That was like the MTV before MTV. And they would just play music videos all night. No, I know? love to I love to talk about this shit and every time you think of a song, like to see your face light up when you hear these <laughs> songs. Like I can see them go through your head and like yeah. how you light up. Like this shit is such a great bridge for us as I like. Cause you know after this shit, I'm finna go listen to all your shit. So you gonna you get should, some streams. You your streams finna to... your streams finna go up too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm gonna double back on all your shit. Cause now I gotta see the the Influence. little bits and pieces the, that you're giving me. Yeah. I just did Dancing with the Stars. So yeah. I'm thinking about, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I picked those songs and all those songs had a connecting story, something to go with it that I appreciate. And it's, I've always wanted to stay away from samples and making music because I always felt like there's gotta be an original feel. I didn't want to sample anything or for a hit, a, a, a a credit be taken away because it's like, well, you sampled a 
fucking smash. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, when we hear that smash, you change up the beat just a little bit and it goes. But I always wanted to feel like I created a new sound that, you know what I'm saying, is something that was just in me. But what I'm hearing, even as you talking, which I'm honestly saying to myself is damn near true, is I don't think anything that I've done I could ever really hold as original now that I think about it because there's all these influences, like you're saying, it's mom and pop playing whatever they like and my auntie's playing what they like and my brother's playing what they like and it all just sort of gets wrapped into you and come out however it come out. You know what I'm saying? It's just cool to know that you can pinpoint songs how you pinpoint them. Well, I guess that's what they mean when they say nothing new under the sun, but like, you know, um, I guess only charted music that you can read is that is would be considered the plain English of music. If you could actually read it, yeah. but all music, all melody, you know, what I mean, harmony, you know, what I'm saying? like, um, you know, composition, you know, it's poetry. You know, what I mean? like, it, and, and it deserves a poetic justice. So it's subject to to interpretation. So your interpretation is original. It's yeah. your own individual account. The way that you um, ingest something and filter it through and then uh, reiterate it, you know, is its own hybrid theory. Yeah. It does still qualify as unique and original, but it, but it does have an origin. Um, there's a lyric from Earth, Wind, and Fire. They have a song called, I'll Write a Song for You. Sound that doesn't dissipate, it only recreates to in another place. You know, uh, Philip Bailey, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. you know, um, I write a song for you, you write a song for me, we write a song of love. <laughs> See, I don't mind singing it for y'all because I'm a fan. Right. You know, right? <laughs> y'all know how it's yeah. coming, man. If you now like, tuning in, it's Iman Amongst Men. <laughs> everybody who go in um, and, and who checks this out, y'all go and reference this song because it's always about music, music education, man. Like, I really mm-hmm. want to be able to drop a few jewels off if I can. They're like to be a blessing and to be of some benefit to someone. Have you ever been damn near envious of today's time of hearing how many resources they have? Like a kid now can propel that sound the way you say. Uh, They can do that in so many different clever ways with social media being around and all that, have you ever been envious to that tool and knowing that you had to do it a totally different route? Oh, no, 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 no never, never envious, maybe in awe. I'm saying, you feel me? Like, um, um, as I, you know, figure out the inner workings into like, you know, um, of the new um, apparatus that allows, what, what meaning like social media, like, you know, I'm, I come from an older God, I come from the Old Testament. We didn't have, you know, um, the advantage, you know, um, mm. but I think sometimes though, how, how it's ironic in a way of where like with all of the different advantages um, that, you know, this generation has, I believe that the quality of the, 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 the music does suffer some. But quality in anything that you mass produce will suffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is why they make an exclusive amount of Yeezy so and so. Or we only did 10 of these. Or we only, you kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, music actually, the best music is meant to be misunderstood, not mass produced. Right. Um, it's no, no different than, than a piece of art. I mean, when they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. It's like to just to sit there and ponder and interpret it as your own and you give it work. There's a great quote from Andy Warhol that says, art is what you can get away with. Damn. So I don't really that's know. A, that's a goddamn tattoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't really know if this generation considers what they do as art or music because it's more commonly called content at this point. Mm-hmm. Copy. Or media. So so content sounds a little bit more impersonal, a bit a little bit more politically correct, you know what I'm saying? Like or incorrect, simply because you can you can classify or consider anything to be content. Just, you know, cut the camera on after goddamn food. You can say right. that. Right. Yeah. Buy it. For sure. For sure. So so I just look at it like now the game is like pork, meaning <laughs> from the rooter to the tutor, everything is for sale. Yeah, it's up for grabs. I I I, I look at it, uh, me and my brother, we talk music, we talk the heartbeat of hip hop all the time. Yeah. And uh we've gotten to the point where we, we just call it bubblegum. 
Like, it's like, even if this is a hit, y'all gonna throw this shit out after a while. Nobody's gonna talk about it. Right. Um, yeah, it's not gonna last. Exactly. I've been sort of envious more so of the older times. Like, I feel like a lot of the things that I got going on, like, I, I wanted to be around for the more appreciative time of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and my wife talk about it all the time. She like, I wish I was an artist back then when people actually cared if you knew X, Y, and Z. It's like, even though a lot of people have this database of all this stuff going on with music, some people don't even appreciate that. They just like, all right, cool, but where's the new record? I want this 808. I need some while I'm drunk in the club right now. And it's like, right. bro, and nobody want to listen to a full album no more. And um, yeah, we, we talk about the heartbeat of music all the time. We're more envious of the older times when you could press play and go one through 17 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than this new time that's, uh, you know, like like you, you're agreeing, we're in agreement with you that it's just a, a bubblegum time of mass producing and getting it out there and getting, because I am, I'm very happy for all the lives that's changing. Like, I, I can't be more happy for more young black kids that just had no way, and now they have a way based upon what you said, content. Right, right. It's what, it's what they call the disposable arts. It's like, you know, like, you know, this generation, what I can say, and I agree with you uh, as, uh, as far as this is concerned, too. Yeah, these kids is making way more money off the art form and they're mm -hmm. controlling it. But at what cost? You make more money at what cost? Right. It's like, all we do is put it and parade it around like, look at me. When there was a time when it wasn't about me, it was about us, it was about crews, it was about boroughs, it was about cities, it was about movements, yeah. um, not, not just me. Like I, I always give one example of, let's say Run DMC, how it was, it was Run's house but DMC was the king of rock, mm -hmm. but they both praised Jam Master J. You know what I'm saying? There's so many sound bites of Jam Master J. And so it was that camaraderie. You don't really see that. But so now you'll see, uh, I came up, this is all me. Mm -hmm. This is all me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is all me. All yeah. me for real. And that's not the diss. That's just to do the, the cross. No, that's just a reference. That's just a reference. Yeah, you know it's a I'm reference saying? into that lens. I, I totally get it. Cause it's these are still songs that, you know, when you when you think about it, artists tap into what the people want to hear. And I think that the time is like you said, the internet all considering everybody became so aware. Because I remember when Instagram first came out, you remember Instagram used to be like views? Yeah. Like man. people didn't take pictures of themselves. Instagram oh, yeah. first came yeah. around. People would take a picture of where they're at. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They'll take a memory picture like next to a bridge. You know, people want to show the Grand Canyon, shit like that. And then slowly but surely, like he's saying, the mass production of it, you you start seeing the numbers on it and people start understanding likes and, you know, becomes, treating. It becomes more yeah. personable. At you that treat point. the page like a billboard. And, you know, you start seeing the the, the self-expression completely take a turn. Everything mm -hmm. 360s. And now it's like he said, it's how can I show that I my, my worth is up? How do I get my ticket up, so to speak? That's 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 deep. We, we, we have to have a whole You know, I'm a, you know I, no, I'm the, I'm big on words. Words mean everything to me. And I'm I'm huge with understanding the definition and then understanding the different ways it could be used. Understand, like you said, in degrees, in, uh, in expression, period. Uh, a lot of words, by definition, don't mean what you think they mean. And you can take them the wrong way. You can read them the wrong way, process them the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I just take a second to process it. I might damn near smirk. But it's uh, it's cool to, to, to see words different. I'm, I'm huge with it. My word bank. I, I'm huge with my word bank. I hope y'all are too, man. CeeLo Green, if y'all didn't know it. I didn't know my man was a professor, man. I, 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 my dog wear many hats, man. I, I did not know I was getting a lesson today. But uh, no, seriously, uh, when we talk in expression, what's the difference to you in an artist and an entertainer? Yeah, there's there's definitely a difference. Um, going you know, to was, we was talking about it the other day with somebody. At some point, you had to do everything. 
Yeah, 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 no doubt. No doubt. Like, like an artist had to be an entertainer. You got to be able to do it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, that- you, you, yeah you got to be, you got to be your own, uh, uh, y- your best supporter, your own worst critic. Man. <laughs> and, uh, you got to be your manager, your real, A&R. You real gotta talk. All, you got to do it everything. And, and you got to get out there and sell it. CeeLo, how much do you think of uh, being an artist makes you like really like vulnerable or is there a point at which you get really vulnerable or afraid to like express a certain you know position in art or like what you're wearing songs anything yeah you 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 you're always um you know in a disposition of vulnerability you know what I'm saying? but you still have to you know have the the bravery you know and the audacity to be honest um you know the, the bravery to be alone in the emotion, alone in the in the idea, in the intellectual property. It's almost like trying to convince someone, um, you know, who has not that you've seen a ghost. Mm. You ain't got to believe me. I know what the fuck I saw. Real talk. <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. that plea, that cry out of trying to be, um, trying to connect, trying to be heard, trying to be believed, trying to be understood, trying to be embraced, or trying to be loved. So like. Yeah, it's always the vulnerability of um, going back to what inspires. And what inspires most artists is alienation, uh, the identity crisis, trying to sort yourself out. Let's say Will Smith, for example. One time I saw an interview with him <laughs> on the show called the, the Actors Guild, and he was like, he first got attracted to acting because there was a time in his life where he literally wanted to be someone else besides himself. Yeah, I ain't so never wanted to be another nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't <laughs> yeah, never wanted, never to, be wanted to be another person. person. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I, but know, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy, yeah, though. That that's that's crazy, though. That if but it's, this is before you find out that you're good enough. This mm-hmm. is before you find out that that there is, you know, and, and, and again, remember, um, a great actor is going to recognize a great actor, but, but, you know, the first ingredient to being great is having great taste. Right. So everybody's right. got to be honest so you can, so you can, you know, do the differentials. <laughs> do the differentials. <laughs> when did you find that, that taste that you're speaking of? Like, when did you think you found that, you know, like your, like your sound, for example, when did you think that, all right, like, I'm good now. Like, I know this is going to take off. It took me a long time, like coming up through Goody Mob, you know, and the Dungeon Family. And there was a time when I was just doing hooks for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew that as a team player, uh, basically like a campaign manager, I can consolidate, I can uh, summarize what the song was saying in a hook. Yeah, yeah. And that's why people came to me for hooks for a long time. And then uh, I guess who who had it, that 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 uh, position after me? Then T Pain came. Yeah. You know, everybody wanted a hook from T Pain. You feel tough. me? And when I first started to sing, I didn't sing as a soloist. I sang and I shrouded myself with all of these different uh, alter egos. And, you know, because, again, I'm coming Mm -hmm. from a church background, so I hear this choir rest, this operatic kind of, you know, these arrangements in my head. So I want to hear all of those different vocalists. But it's not just a a choir of um, participants, but it's a choir of lead singers because, you know, I'm, I'm a lead singer, too. So basically, it's all of the mini selves, the the mm. me, myself, and the I, the trifecta, the mm. butterfly effect. Mm. So yeah. if you notice, what I'm describing is a an uh, an aesthetic and approach that D'Angelo uses. If you notice, he don't really do um, singular vocals. It's a lot of mm-hmm. you know, yeah. just think of that. Uh, how does it feel? Ah, ah. You know, he just yeah. back backing himself up. It's it's really similar to the way that Slick Rick records vocals. You know, um, well, it was one of those days. Not much to do. Then I was out with the old school crew. Come on, let's do all the bounce, bounce, and pizza. You know, yeah, you know bounce well, all you know around. Saying? It's like it's, it's five around. people in the room. So he wasn't alone, right? All of your imaginary friends, right? You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Um, and so basically you see a physical representation of that in uh, Andre 3000's Hey Ya video when he's playing the whole band. Yeah. Cause I, so I was doing all of these big hook vocals and it took me until I finally did Niles Barkley to start singing 
in a singular notion. Just I remember when I remember I remember when I lost my mind. Yeah. So I just did it one time, and that's it. Just a raw vocal, and that was the most effective. Wait a minute. So you never re-recorded that? Yeah, that was a one take, Jake. Just one take. Because what happened was, it's basically the demo, and it leaked. So I that remember that. that leaked because we was we was passing the demo around trying to get signed when that record and that record leaked and it went to number one mm-hmm. in Europe by digital downloads alone. Damn. So that was like an accidental hit. Well, not not technically accidental, but accidental in that raw vocal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was, it was yeah. like once it was already out, you like, well, I can't remix it now. But I can't right. I can't I can't clean it up now. It's already gone. Absolutely. Yeah, we got together, man, and recorded those songs for about eight days in Atlanta. He had something else to do. I had something else to do. We were just trying to be, you know, proactive. Okay, we got a window. Let's see what we can come up with. You know, I did the record. You know, um, a lot of the a lot of the times, and, and a lot of the uh, the ways that I get things out is to not take myself so seriously. So that brings this conversation back around full circle to fashion. And that's why they call it a fashion statement. If you know, if you can, if you can say it there, then you can actually say less. Yeah. If I can have a, a mohawk or a tattoo to say that I'm alternative or I'm or I'm committed to something or like I'm against the grain, I'm a rebel. I mean, like that's what yeah. you're trying to say. You know, but you are trying to, you know, you are. It is a, a, a self-expression, but it's like who you talking to. I mean, like mm-hmm. and every everything that we do is a love letter to whom it may concern. It's who right. ever care. Real talk. But but we're trying to get each other to care again because we've all become so comfortably numb. So that's why we push the envelope and make and, and take fashion risks, you know, just trying to to jar and to, you know, uh put that jolt or that 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 um that spike, that stimulus package. That stemmy. <laughs> the stemmy. <laughs> the stemmy pack. Every Bring the stimmy pack through. Every now and again, society needs that stimmy pack, man. <laughs> That's what I be about. How can I contribute to culture? You know yeah. what I mean? How can I put another brick in the wall and make it taller, make it stronger, make it livable, sustainable? Really? You know really? what I'm saying? And I be, and I begin to I begin to care and, I, and, and like my compassion and it just comes about. And I want to just give into it. And I, you know, I wanna, I wanna devote myself to it to the death. At my soul, it's the it's the nurturing um that quality, you know, but my attitude is like rock and roll. I mean like because I'm like, I gotta go against the grain, I gotta go up against the, the man, the machine, the powers that be, because they're not advocating for individuality. hmm Does yeah. it ever I got a a, a sidebar now that you you're saying that. Have you ever ran into a situation where you feel Hip hop needs this right now, and ain't none of y'all ass gonna do it. So I'm gonna do it in this hip hop lane that y'all can digest, like like a classic. Like if you ever felt like like me, we missed that old school Wu Tang sound, and then you got Benny the Butcher that comes, and he like it's like yo, that's like what? Thank you. Like where the fuck you just come from? Have you ever felt like even though you've gone through this period where it's like you've damn near graduated from certain sounds of it being that simple in art. But have you ever felt like the game need this? Like you were saying, let me put another brick in the wall. Have you ever felt like, man, I might need to go back and put some old clothes on and get y'all that just because y'all need it. It ain't even got nothing about where I need to be in life. I just feel like the game needs this. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah, I feel that way right now. You know what I mean? Like I get inspired so, so, by so I'm finna get a, I'm finna get a rap out. That what you telling me? You been, <laughs> you been talking to me so? <laughs> oh yeah, man. You, I'm, I'm gonna send you some stuff too, bro. Cause you know, people don't know that we fam like that. I mean, man, like, you man. Know, we, we, we talked all through the pandemic over the phone. But I look at you at a certain plateau. You know what I'm saying? To be on the phone with you and even talk music when we did during the pandemic, and you to like, I feel like you knock yourself off of a high horse so like calm it's like it's like you wouldn't even know like even how you just chilling talking to us now it's like you knock yourself off a high horse and i know 
there's so many people that go above and beyond to do this other representation of themselves. And I just really appreciate, I always appreciated that down to earth vibe. Like. Now you always showed me love, man. And you know what though? I think everybody was able to bear witness to me push and continue to take risks. Yeah. Take those take the leap and still land on my feet. That's something to be said about that, man. Like I'm I'm a I'm a truly committed person. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, um But it's a walking it's a it's a walking testament for the the young artists. Like as you said, the cause now that I'm sure it's a household or two. Like I know my kids, they not they might not reference those artists that you said, but they gonna be able to reference uh CeeLo Green, Niles Barkley. Like, they gonna be able to say that. Like, my dad had me listening to that. I don't know why he didn't want to listen to my little Nas record that I was playing, but he wanted to listen to CeeLo Green. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they hear that. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's just cool to see you, like, like I said, to see you light up when you tell it to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, because I, he give me life, man. This is my vitality. Mm. You know, my gear is always progressive forward motion. Mm. And like, we, we, we definitely gonna knock down some trees, man, and blaze a trail, man. So, so people can, you know, can can come behind it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, or come with it. Yeah, yeah. It's you, always you ain't, got, you ain't got to get behind me. You can get beside me. You can get with me. We talk about Hollywood, and we talk about uh, there's one version of where people like people go Hollywood, and they're just like not as communicative to their roots and where they come from. And then there's the Hollywood where it's like. He Hollywood. I don't mm. know. I don't know what they got going on over there. Can you talk about uh, one just reaching a level where Hollywood is even a conversation, and then how do you deal with it? Fortunately for me, I had a very healthy preoccupation while I was living there for about five years. Yeah, and, and that was network television. So my hours. You was a working man. I was a working man, bro. <laughs> I wasn't even bullshit at all. Yeah. So you weren't even letting that energy even enter what you had going on. Nah, you know, and I knew what to expect. So Real talk. I, I repelled a lot. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But like, you know, you can't you can't expect to to to, to go to go down through the trench and at least get some shit on your shoes. But there's a song, man. Again, there's a song that describes Hollywood in this scenario so effectively. What's it's that? the arithmics, sweet dreams. Arithmics. This is what describes Hollywood to me. Sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to, to disagree? disagree? I travel the world in the seven, seven seas. seas. Everybody's, Everybody's looking, looking for, for something. something. Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to be used by you. <laughs> Some of them want to abuse you. Some of them want to be abused. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to in every disagree? Other movie. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it sound different with that man saying that mm -hmm. poetically, dog. Calm yeah, down. You think, I need of, you think of the lyric? I live, right, I live right off of off of sunset. It's all out there, man. It's yeah. it's all out there. Every it's every energy. form of temptation. Yeah, it's every it's definitely form. an energy out there, man. And um, after my stint at the Voice was up, you know, I got on out of there, and I moved to Vegas for a couple of years. And you know, people might think that Vegas is worse. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. But actually, the off the off, if you're not on the strip though, Vegas it's is actually right? very yeah. calm, very out the way, yeah, hot, hot as hell, hot, hot as hell. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't getting away from that heat. You ain't getting away. Nah, you better no, have a that, pool. You better have a but pool. But it's perfect though. It's perfect like West Coast weather. Like you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today, cool at night. So yeah, I lived out there in, in, in Henderson or Summerlin. You know, one of yeah. them. Right? So that's that's like 20, 30 minutes away from the strip. Yeah. It's beautiful. I loved it out there. It was peaceful, tranquil, yeah. serene, and yeah. clean. All these little miniature sand capsules, basically. Oh, that yeah. clay stucco vibe. Like, big, huge uh, properties, all that old nice square footage. That shit was luxurious as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it out there, man. Like, Word. Was, I, yeah, I was like, damn, I could have been living over here, man, for half the price. For half the... That's what it be. That's what it be, man. Half that price, man. Uh, do you have any uh stories like crazy? Because I know you just said you tried as much as you could to avoid the craziness in Hollywood. But, but check like it out, though. I got it for you. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so. Look, so around this time, I think they slowed down considerably. But around this time, man, in, in that five year span, TMZ was hot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but think about it. As long as we can remember, man, you even got. 
episodes of different strokes where they had the map to the stars, houses and stuff like that. That's been a thing, it, it, you know, like a mm-hmm. breach of your privacy to be, you know, violated us for so close for comfort. It's like, I mean, what what, what they do that at besides L.A.? Yeah. Hey, we're just going to ride past where somebody stay at. <laughs> right, <laughs> real right. talk, yeah, real talk, no so real talk. They've been, they been doing that. So y'all, I don't know if y'all remember the episode of Different Strokes where they went to see the Psycho House or the Universal Studios tour and all that kind of shit. But mm. anyway, that's real old school. But <laughs> but um, but um, yeah, so that's happened before. And I wasn't even there. It wasn't, it, it wasn't, in, my, it wasn't in my name or nothing like that. So I really don't know how I went up on the, on the, uh, on the listings. But yeah, one of the little tour trolleys came through and you can hear them on the intercom. And yes, CeeLo Green and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, yo. They don't even have to check with you before they do that? They could just do it? Th- th- let me tell you why they don't got to do it. You know, at the end of every TMZ episode when Harvey says, I'm a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Okay? So he that's basically like, they know within the, you know, the-, the Oh, so um, he know the law. He know the law. Yeah. So basically, they could stand at your mailbox and then not be unlawful. Uh, even if they telling people, but damn, even if they telling people where you live? Yeah, that's a safety hazard. Apparently, it come with the game, and the exploitation of, um, you know, the, the artists, actors, entertainers. I mean, they really should be heralded, you know, uh, and protected as national treasures, mm-hmm. but no, nah, they'd rather exploit them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... That's shame. And so that's been going on before we even got in the game. Yeah. So I've had people come back to the crib, like after getting off the off of the tour, um, mm. you know, come back in their own car and wait out there and, you know, want to get an autograph. So that, that happened to me once. And then one time we was eating lunch. Yo, yeah, I'm sure you ate at a spot called Berries, right? Berries, yeah. I had berries. Yeah. Late night spot. Yeah, so berries on third, that used to be the spot, man. That shit was like. Man, that, yeah. that was, <laughs> they stay over late. That lobster pizza, man, that shit. Come on, yeah, you already Bust. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, one time we was at, you know, it was a quiet afternoon. I was having lunch with my lady, and um, you know, so we going out the back door, and um, I'm assuming that either a valet or a dishwasher, somebody got to connect to TMZ. And they like, you know, he's in here. And that could go for anybody. So we going out the back door, right? And you know the little alleys behind the buildings? Yeah. You, if somebody's apartment where their car is back in, it's like a little garage, little area. So it's like rows of cars. And this yeah. the alley. And this the back door coming out of the restaurant where their dumpster is or whatever. Yeah. So we park back there. And dude pops up from behind one of the parked cars yeah. in someone's <laughs> garage and takes a picture of us. Uh, and I was like, I was like, yo, I said, come here, come here, come here. And he was like, yo, I said, no, come here, bro. It's cool. I just want to ask you something. I said, yo, I said, man, shoot straight. I said, how y'all know I was here? Guess what he said? He said, he said, well, put it this way. You lucky these are cameras and not guns because we're good. He didn't say that to you. That's exactly what he said. Hey, man. I was like, damn. <laughs> them people after you? <laughs> like, what did you do? <laughs> right, man. On the next episode of Power, man. Right. My man CeeLo had to get rid of Dooley. Yeah. <laughs> Making you moves. Know what? I, I, I thought it was um I thought it was dope, the analogy. I, I like Oh I, no, for sure. I get it. Where it's like No, that was that was profound for me. Because like, yeah. He 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 wiped my nose with that. He He me. basically told me like you ain't as low as you think. Yeah. yeah. Like y'all ain't as, y'all ain't low out here. I appreciated it. And so yeah. what I just learned how to do is just politic with them and try to give them a little bit of what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? If they catch me, I was just always cordial. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever the little topic is. What do you think about so and so and so and so? Oh man, shit, you know, I don't know. Whatever, whatever I <laughs> right. might say. Yeah. And just try to give them a quick sound bite and keep it moving. Yeah, you know say give them a little something and that's it. Man, you just gotta feed the beast a little bit. Yeah. We gonna uh Transition, Perfect. you know, we get into the best part. We both fathers, you a father as well. Uh, let's talk about that. Um, your upbringing as a child, did that influence your parenting style? Oh yeah, man. My son, he'll be 22 this year. Yes, sir. Young kid, 
Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a proud father. I definitely wanted to be the father figure, uh, role model and male presence that I did not necessarily have, mm. you know? Um, and I, um, I got right on top of it by giving him uh, music. So um, when he was young, even when he was in the womb, I would play, um, believe it or not, it would, it would be these, these CDs from Target. It might be Celtic uh, horns mm-hmm. or- The uh, Tranquil CDs. <laughs> Summer Breeze or something like that. So I would play stuff like that in the womb while, while, while we were sleeping. Uh, but then when he was born, you know, I got another C- CD called Beethoven for Babies. Mm. You know, give him all, all of those classical compositional type shit. <laughs> um, you know, so, and you know me, I'm going to play what I listen to anyway. You know, basically, you know, there's a lot of truth to them saying you are what you eat. I'm saying like, you know, mm-hmm. but but to go a step further, you are what you ingest, meaning like what you're entertained by you're or what right. you allow. So, you know, you try to govern that to the best of your ability. And, you know, I play the music Earth, Wind & Fire. I play all of the, you know, my generation's best. And um, he's got a couple of those, um, those com- you know, those attributes as as me, you know, because he's an artist too. And he's very accomplished, man. He's, uh, you know, plays bass and guitar, producer, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. illustrator. He, he's a talented kid, man, oh. um, or well, young man at this point. And it just comes from a proper encouraging environment because, like, well, that's how I got turned on to y'all. You all playing smiley faces when your little one was, was really small. And I remember yeah. seeing the clip. And I was like, damn, yeah. that was so beautiful, man. That really just touched me. And, you know, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. I'm like, that whole Nas Barkley album, like, you yeah. know, I knew that you were a fan of that project. And, like, I don't know what you even considered that music to be. All it could ever be, in my opinion, is an alternative. It's Black music. It's, yeah. it's boundless music. I mean, like, it's colorless. It's 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 timeless. It's universal. It really is. I I never really grouped it as a as an actual genre. I always called it alternative too, because I believe that's what it was like categorized as. Uh, the only reason I know categorize like where it was categorized, I'll take y'all the backstory. I used to burn CDs for people, mm-hmm. so I used to be telling like when people would have me do a mix CD. When that album came out, not only would I put, like, I put Crazy on there, but I was like, when was the last time you danced? Like, I'm yeah. like, I'm putting that on there. I'm putting smiley faces. I'm putting uh, 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 Feng Shui on there. Like, just yeah. giving people this, because I'm like, gee, I, I'm like, trust me. I'll never tell y'all to play no shit like this, bro. I'm like, trust me, I'll never. But I'm like, do you hear what dude is saying, bro? I'm like, he fucking me up with this St. Elsewhere shit. I'm like, you hear what he's saying, bro? But this is back then, you see what I'm saying? So when I play Smiley Faces for my wife, my wife was kind of looking at me like, I just wouldn't expect you to know this. Like, I wouldn't expect you to be singing and dancing. Because <laughs> she knew it, but she a singer, so she's like, sang it. Like, she hearing all the other things of it. And I'm like, bro, do you hear what the nigga's saying, bro? <laughs> I'm like, it was a point in my life I needed this song. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. I played it for Junie. And I watched her face light up, and I'm like, you've never heard this. You don't even know what the fuck it is. Like, and you, what? She was, what, one or two? Like, she not even talking, and she like, she yeah. hearing it. She like, hell yeah. I'm like, so I know I'm not tripping. That feeling and that vibe, like you said, is really timeless. Like, I, first time I heard it, I was tickled to death. First time my mama heard it, she tickled to death. Junie just got born, she tickled to death. I'm like, this is a special record. So if we're calling that an alternative feeling, Cool. That's hey man. I want to try alternative music one day. I just yeah, don't no be doubt. hearing that. Sh- I just don't be hearing that shit in my head like that. Like once y'all find the live instruments, I hear words all the time. It's just some of the ways that y'all uh, even allow things to build. I'm that's my newest thing that I'm touching with music. Like how it builds. Like the excitement that comes into something that you like. Man, I cannot wait till this drop. Like, I love that charge up and that elongated charge up that they used to do on old school songs. Like, you used to have to wait like a minute right. before they even drop that shit. But it that's where most of the samples come from. Niggas leaving that much room 
with goddamn all that instrumental, it's like motherfuckers start sampling, people start rapping on it, but it was like people, singer come on there and talk for real light, right. real light though. I could just talk for a little bit and let it coast, man, it's cool. And that right, goes right, a right. lot to what he was saying about like, you know, it being about more than just you. Like I feel like him, especially around that period right there where he was partnered with, that was with, what DJ? That was Danger Mouse, right? Yes. Yeah, it's when they, I feel like that, partnership I don't know why it was so perfect like for me in my life at that moment like because yeah. he talked a lot on both of those albums that you just referenced uh about like mental health and like you know being in a certain space that you can't really control or recognize and being comfortable in being uncomfortable yeah that's yeah it's kind of like you accepting you know a role that you're not used to and it you know oh, it kind of yeah. it kind of put me in a place that you know the point that I heard it and the point it was out like because I was a young father I was trying to be present and all of that and it just it seemed like it wasn't working and mm -hmm. that shit was damn near like the fucking soundtrack to like a quarter of my year Real talk. so Real when, talk. I, when I <laughs> when I reference to that I was going to allude to like what do you think that means like you know like when you're dealing with that mental space or like the people you're speaking to in those type of songs like what do you think that means to like be present and to like be, you know, okay with yourself, no matter what the case may be. You know, each song becomes an, an, an imitation of life. You get a chance to embellish, you know, on the truth, you know, once you know it. Um, and again, it goes back to that poetic justice I was speaking about earlier, because I mean, we all know, I mean, like, you know, that real life doesn't necessarily rhyme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. real talk. You know, so um, we're all trying to uh, speak truth to power, but you have to first identify and address the root of a problem, of a condition, of a concern, of a question, a quirk in your humanity or your character. You have mm -hmm. to be honest with those things. So saying like you know, like uh, and, and right from uh, that that vulnerable that that soft spot. Yeah. But also write, you know, like with strength. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because, you know, knowing is half the battle. You, you say know, that, uh, you say you say imitation of life. What do you what does that phrase mean? Basically, it, it's, it's it's just like the lyric to crazy, like, uh, you really think you're in control. Yeah. Uh I, you know, I don't think so. Like, you know, like people like, okay, let me put it like this. Some people think that being real is how long you can stay the same. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know I mean? like how, how, how effectively can you repeat yourself over and over and over again? You know I mean? like, it's like, so it's no different than, you know, when, when these characters are kind of like, uh, they become iconic, you know, people don't want, they don't, they, people don't want to, to uh, shed the skin. Like Flavor Flav don't, don't want to take off the clock, but you might not know, you might not know him without the clock. You yeah. kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. You have to, continue to grow. And then also people try to also um, stagnate themselves or move slower and take baby steps because life, of course, is this one way street. We're going forward. We're going all the way to God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and to me, God is an acronym, of, you know, gaining one's definition. And you may only find that in death and transition. We are always in motion, the work in progress. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the mistakes or, or, or dragging your feet or taking your time, basically, that, that's mm -hmm. a positive way to view everything. You know, or just taking your time, you just feel like um, some people are afraid of the responsibility, you know, um, and, and going forward. It's like, let me, let me just go around in circles uh, as opposed to going in that straight line that is life. You know, like seasons are circular. You know what I'm saying? Like, but life is a line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the times, just to, to play it safer, we either stand still or we take baby steps because we feel like, you know, because the shortest distance between point A and point B is the straight line. I mean, like, but I believe life should be experienced in all of its wonder and unknowingness, you know, by taking the scenic route and stopping mm -hmm. to smell the flowers. Yeah. Um, you know, and I look at life in terms of vital signs, okay? Uh, life, the straight line, people equate that to like a perfect life. I didn't really have no, I ain't go to jail. 
I ain't getting no car accidents, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know I mean? like I'm straight, I ain't getting no COVID, bullshit. You know what I'm, I'm straight, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, everything, I'm just straight. Mm-hmm. Okay, but in, in terms of vital, in terms of vitality, the straight line represents death. Only when you're going up and down are you actually alive. So up and down is the peak and valley of being alive. Boy. Mm. Boy. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, that's the, hey, that's about the coldest gym I've heard in so long. A straight line and a safe life is actually death. That's right. That's the quickest way. That's the quickest way. That is Cause insane. Because it's, 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 if that, I, I don't think I've ever heard a more beautiful reference in the peak and valleys, mm-hmm. the up and down. Like you have to fall. Like I've been my whole life. I tell people about that. You hear Michael Jordan talk about that. It's my failures that made me what I am. That's how I learned how to do this. That's how I really learned to take on the responsibility, taking on that failure, taking that chance. And you preach this to people all the time. But that visual of that flat line. And you say people just want to do that. I was never in jail. I never got locked up. I ain't never got fired. I always quit a week before. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like all these excuses. And then it'd be like, but hey, you could loan me a couple dollars. <laughs> 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 like, motherfucker, get off that. Like, and so it's, it's just cool for somebody to bring a, a, a visual to that. Given that definition uh, of the phrase, of imitation of life, we always ask our, our guests, and my brother, my brother came up with this uh, question. I love it. It's my favorite question. Uh, what are you working on uh, improving in yourself at the present time? Because we we always talk about like what our goals are and all. The, at the present time, even after just wrapping this conversation, like what do you think moving forward with intention? What is the next move for you as far as personally? There's so much that I want to say with my power um, and, and, and my platform, my saving grace is sharing the information, yeah. teaching, you know, um, and learning in the process. Um, so I'm always an advocate of those above things mentioned. Um, and then I'm also like just an advocate of, of, of mental health, like to me, like physical health. So like, you know, just about, you know, um, answering a call of duty, you know, just doing the diligence, doing what's right. I mean, like, you know, like um, Abraham Lincoln has this great quote. He said, when I do good, I feel good. When I do bad, I feel bad. That's my religion. And I think, I think life should be simple like that. You know what I'm saying, you know, um, you know, you just have to shine as the, the beacon, you know, um, you know, as the example, you know, show and prove, do more, say less, just show and prove. But, but you, you definitely have to be intentional in your action. Um, you know, you have to uh, be inspired and you have to be tried and true. You know, you have to have gone through the, 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 the experience in, like, in order to have, you know, gotten the wisdom, the knowledge, wisdom and understanding, you know, um, don't shield yourself, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, uh, you know, weather the storm, you know, so I guess I'm just a missionary in that kind of way. And I care about those who are, less fortunate, you know, like, you know, maybe they just haven't had the exposure. Uh, maybe they don't have the esteem. Maybe they don't have the encouragement. You know, I want, I want them to really be able to, to see in me the true definition of something supernatural, something extraordinary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I'm blessed. I feel like, you know, it's a movie, old school movie with Richard Fry called Brewster's Millions. And the, the concept of the movies was you had to spend a certain amount of money to get a bigger amount of money. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I got to exhaust what I have right now to go and get my big gift. You know, there's something bigger waiting for me. So like, I got to be willing to give it all up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's songs like, it's songs like that I reference. I'm glad a song, because we're talking about music, we're talking about style, yeah. we're talking about the arts, we're talking about industry, we're talking about life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you feel mm-hmm. me? Life, like, is a, life is a soundtrack, bro. Mm-hmm. Life is a soundtrack, bro, it right? Really is. You know what I mean? So it's songs, it's songs like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Give It Away. You know, when he says, mm-hmm. like, what I got, you got to give it to your mama. What I got, you got to give it to your papa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, give it away, give, give it, it away. away. You give feel it away me? Now. And I believe in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe, you know, um, in, in, in charity, you know what I'm saying? Like, in tithing. 
I believe yeah. in tithing with my time, my energy, my influence, my opinion. But then, of course, you have opposition to your opinion because your opinion is politics. Mm -hmm. sure. So sure. You, we got to be educated and we got to be we got to be stern. You know what I'm saying like we got to be sturdy. I think it's great that we get into a place. So I feel like 2022 is this is a good place for us to be in where one person gives their opinion, another person gives their opinion. We have a conversation. It's constructive. That's it, bro. Constructive. Constructive, man. Let's talk about it, man. Put it on the table. That's mm -hmm. it. How we mm -hmm. doing is talking. Word. That's a great. I saw another great quote too. It was a meme that said, "We should be more kinder to each other because at the end of the day, we're only just walking each other home." Mm -hmm. That's how we doing. Took him to church, CeeLo. He's in church. Let's not act like it's no more than that. I man. like you words, like man. It. You know how I am with words, but I just like I love I love words. It's, it's amazing. We're just walking each other home. It's all That's good, crazy. man. Let's Real enjoy tough. each other, man. Every show we like to tap in with one of my fans on social media um, for you guys to get to ask these burning questions that you always ask. We're going to be as honest as possible. If you're now tuning in to see Mon Amongst Men, Ari, what question we got today? Today we got a question from Mr. I Like Me Too on IG. He's asking, Iman, how can I land my first movie role out here in Chicago? Please point me in the right direction. Oh, man. Uh... <sighs> Point you in the right direction. I think uh, we we touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, social media has opened the floodgates to content. Uh, a good tester of making noise and being able to collect numbers. Uh, as we were talking earlier, you talk about all these big umbrellas, all these big businesses. They look for numbers. Uh, social media has made it to where you calculate how many people exactly are going to check this billboard out rather than putting it on the side of a building and saying hit or miss this many people probably drive past here. Um, so I think taking advantage of putting your content on social media, uh, which can help you generate a real following, that gives you the numbers that you can take to uh, an acting agency and say, yo, I really want to step forward with something like this. That's that's the route that I would take. Collaborations, uh, figuring out ways to collaborate with other young actors. Uh, or not, I don't know how young he is, but uh, with other actors uh, to make something that, like I said, is something that y'all see uh, you be able to monetize in the near future. Um, I think all people that take on new actors they take it on for one, um, you know, seeing that you can really do your craft, but two, having the numbers and uh, army behind you that says, no, this person is really dope, uh, always helps you jump up the list on, you know, an email chain, whatever. <laughs> if I had a list, if you come with a reference and I get to see your work and I see what's going on, it's much easier to go off of. So getting those auditions done, making up those monologues, you know, doing oh, other content. This, this is uh, what you're not gonna help this man. Who you're not gonna help, Mister? I like me too. What you mean? I'm not gonna help him. That's not helping a man. That you is just gonna gave help this him. man to run around and told him to that's go. That's not the run around. That's really what you can... in an email chain and food. no. I said that's how you jump up the, oh, the names on it. If he I had trying, a list, he trying to land a role now. Dog, I'm telling time. you, you if to land a role, you got to get them auditions. To get auditions, you got to have your auditions to show that you can even act. Like I'm trying to get, you got to get on the map before you can land. Man, I can't, shit, I can't help you from acting's outside hard. the club. You got to get in. <laughs> acting's hard. <laughs> CeeLo, for you, similar question. For those interested uh, breaking into the music industry, you know, budding artists, young artists, what, what do you think is the most important advice to take on? Consistency. You can't ever insist, you can only persist. You can't insist that your way is the only way, you know, um, and forging, you know, um, a place, you know, a niche, you know, for yourself, you know. Um, but I just think, I think, I think you gotta sometimes, sometimes, you know, hard work, you know, um, um, hard work uh, 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 overshadow talent sometimes. You can be talented and get complacent in that. You can't just be talented, you gotta be tenacious. Yeah. Um, and take risk, you know, look at the landscape or the playing field, see what see what people is doing. Can you add on? Let's see what you can bring different to the game. 
Yeah. Um, that that's that's kind of what I say. You know what I mean? Like my whole attitude is always about not how can I compete, but how can I coexist? Word, word. That's how. So you hear what he's saying, man? Young artists out there, be original, be yourself, be persistent in creating that world and that niche. Uh, and tenacious. Yeah, be tenacious. Ah. Get on their ass, so to speak. Ah. It's all these other terminologies for it. Be on their ass. Be about it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. All that shit. Facts. <laughs> Man, CeeLo, I want to give a huge thank you for coming out here and uh, dropping jewels, man. Seriously, uh, the music references, the stories, uh, the laughs, it's all appreciated. Uh, you one of my favorites, one of my brother's favorites. To have you on the show is a great honor. Uh, Ari, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say or if anything you wanted to promote, but now's the time. We all you, CeeLo. Um, you know, well, um, we we still in strong support of Goody Mob's last album, Survival Kit. We just did our 26th year anniversary yes, of Soul Food, 24th year anniversary of Still Standing. And uh, we've been touring uh, pretty consecutively over the last year or so in support so. of the new album, Survival Kit. You know, mm-hmm. on all streaming platforms. You yes, know, as sir. We, you know, so it's always about the Almighty Dungeon family representing Atlanta, Georgia, mm, established yes, in 1994. You see the smile the coming out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, you know right. just, and just catch me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll be around. I'm out there, man. I'm out no, there. No, for sure. Outside. When I and when I leave uh when I leave to LA and get back to Miami, I'm gonna let you know, man, if we can get up, dog. Come on, man. I, I, I'm waiting on you, baby. Come uh, on. <laughs> I got you, man. Thanks again, man. We gone. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. For sure, y'all. All right, bro. Take care. Peace.